If you visit the hill country of Monroe County, Tennessee, you may be struck by its scattered settlements, whose inhabitants pursue diverse trades while nursing their humble heritage. You may wonder at or idly pass the rusting relics of ancient industries, or the many fields cleared from narrow valleys, dotted with cows or plowed for the next year's crop. But if you forsake the towns for the hills, and head eastward for the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains, you may come across secluded reminders of a more distant and solemn past. The Tennessee Cherokee Village Marker, standing alone by a mountain crossroads, reminds passers-by of this quiet land's former inhabitants. The Cherokee, early pathfinders and settlers of the southern Appalachians, tamed and named the rivers and woods of this region, which the Europeans from the coast came to call the Overhill Country. Tennessee, which was to one day give its name to our modern state, was a modest settlement and one-time capital of the Overhill Cherokee. Although its location is now flooded by dams downriver, its old location and importance remain remembered. The name in its modern form first appeared in a map drawn by colonist Lieutenant Henry Timberlake, based on his journals from an expedition in 1762. The story behind this expedition and its consequences affirmed the Overhill Country, past and present, as a land of discovery and adventure. For centuries, the Cherokee peoples inhabited the natural fastness of the southern Appalachian Mountains. Protected and isolated from Europeans and rival tribes, they grew prosperous and powerful, and were a daunting presence to the early colonists venturing inland from Charlestown. Modern-day Fort Loudoun, now resurrected above the floodwaters from its historic site, offers visitors a physical link to this past. Fort Loudoun was the westernmost English outpost in this isolated region, from which its owners tried to arrest the Mississippi Valley and its trade from the rival French. With the outbreak of the French and Indian War, tensions between South Carolina and the Cherokee rose, until mutual massacres sparked the outbreak of war led by Chief Atacullacullah. The fort was besieged and surrendered in 1760, leading vengeful English campaigns to ravage the Overhill Country until a Cherokee delegation made overtures for peace. To heal this breach, colonial authorities assigned Lieutenant Henry Timberlake to head the peace expedition. Traveling westward over distant heights, Timberlake followed the route that had already become the main thoroughfare between Carolina and the Overhill Country. Throughout his stay, the envoy kept a meticulous journal of events, which provides many of our best descriptions of life among the Overhill Cherokee. Timberlake was first hosted by Chief Otacity Ostinaco of the village of Timotle, who befriended and escorted him along the Teleco River. Eventually, they reached the metropolis of Chota, of which nearby Tanasi village was essentially a suburb, where the two parties literally buried the hatchet. After three months, disturbed by unfamiliar customs, worried by the outbreak of renewed war between the Cherokee and rival tribes, and sickened by frequent smoking of the peace pipe, the lieutenant pleaded with Ostinaco until his friend reluctantly escorted him back to Virginia. This was not the end of Timberlake's adventures with the Cherokee. Three years later, the two parties reversed roles, when three Cherokee chiefs appealed for an enforcement of the Proclamation Line of 1763, which limited colonial encroachment. Timberlake was their natural contact, and despite the risks, he funded an unauthorized visit to London to meet King George. Through his efforts, and despite much delay, Chiefs Ostinaco, Pouting Pigeon, and Stalking Turkey managed to hold an awkward and mutually unintelligible audience with the king, which nevertheless earned them a written declaration, recognizing the Cherokee as protected subjects. Despite this limited success, Timberlake was incarcerated for defaulting on loans and breaching protocol. Already in poor health, he died imprisoned shortly after completing his memoirs. Meanwhile, the chiefs returned via Charlestown, and soon after they held a great peace council between the Cherokee, including both Ostinaco and Atacalacala, and colonial governors in Georgia. These exchanges and encounters brought the Cherokee into a closer relationship with white settlers, and laid the grounds for their triumphant and tragic history over the next century. Timberlake's memoirs and map have become vital sources for our knowledge of the Overhill Cherokee. Besides leaving us the earliest use of the name Tennessee, Timberlake's draught of the Cherokee country is still used by archaeologists 
and the Tennessee Valley Authority for reference in preserving historical sites. Now only the historical markers remain to lead visitors to this remarkable story. The Tennessee marker is a single thread in the country's knotted history, and whoever follows it will find a wealth of stories that enrich the region beyond even the beauty of nature. The local towns reflect this cherished past in such places as the museums at Teleco Plains, Sequoia Birthplace, or Fort Loudoun. In the warmer months, the rivers fill with rafts and inner tubes, the trails with hikers. The old game trails, now paved, echo to the roar of engines, while ancient hollows glow from the flames of primitive campsites. A scant 12 miles from the North Carolina border, an area that was once an artery of history has now become a wild escape from modern life. But at this old, quiet crossroads, Monroe County retains a hint of what it was in Timberlake's day, a land of hidden discoveries and adventures. <laughs>